So most of the basic knowledge about uh, electrochemistry came from uh, the word book. That's why it's called the Bible. And the discussion that I have here is mostly from, uh, we could say, the Bard book, but uh, trying to simplify uh, the discussion as much as possible. So we're going to continue. So I uh, put an updated uh, slide, but I'm not sure if I'm going to what we call finish all of this slide. So we already uh, have an introduction about the method, the electroanalytical method, and some of the uh, stuff, okay? So as you could see, you, you might be asking yourself, why, why are we talking about the batteries? But in truth, it, it's not really about the batteries. It's just that the history, okay, of electrochemistry, is tied up with the battery, but if you're going to look, okay, there will come a diversion where the battery and the electrodes will, uh, we could say, deviate from one another or separate from one another. But if you're going to look at the principle that they have, uh, that we have, it's almost the same as what we call the battery. Okay, now. This may not be new to you, but I will not be surprised if you didn't understand the so-called uh, paradigm and non-paradigm uh, currents. Okay, so they said there are two types of process that can conduct currents across an electrode solution interface, and we could say the simplest way to differentiate the uh, band. Uh, the 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 the, the paradic, kulang pa ako ng eight, and non paradic uh, we could say current is one of them obey the paradis law, and the other one don't obey this what we call paradis law. Okay, so I I think that's the simplest uh way to differentiate them. Okay, so if we we go with the paradic uh current. So usually it involves what? The fundamental thing that allows electricity okay, to happen, electrons. So this is an electron. Uh, this is the transfer of electron okay, from or to electrode by the redox reaction. So it involves the direct transfer of electron via the oxidation reaction at one electrode and a reduction reaction at the other, okay? So processes like this are what we call paradic processes because they obey the Faraday's law, which states that the amount of the current is proportional to the amount of the species oxidized or reduced, okay? So this is one condition, and I think here, you will see the separation between what we call the batteries and the other stuff. So we could say here, so maybe this paradise law, uh, paradise law uh, that's the governing principle between with what we call the batteries. Now, on the other hand, okay, if we're going to look at this what we call cell that don't produce these paradigm processes. So they, they, they have process other than the redox reaction that electrode, like the charging current, okay? So that's what we call the non paradigm uh, processes, okay? So this happened when it was first applied a uh, potential to the electrode and then it get the distribution of ions near its surface to counter the charge on the electron. So we could say there's what? The movement of ions. And that movement of ions result in current. So there's no electron involved. 
Okay. And as the system approach the equilibrium, it results in get a, a decrease in the ion movement and current. So there's a movement there. So what happened? Okay. As it reached equilibrium, okay. So there is an increase, uh, a decrease in the ion movement and the current. Why? What happened when you have equilibrium? Any anyone can tell? Uh, share what happened when you have uh, what we, when you have a system at equilibrium. You think everything stops, but what really happened during an equilibrium? Okay. So there's an equal rate of the forward and backward reaction. Okay. Now, we could say if you want to understand uh, the difference, the, the basic difference between the paradic and non paradic current, imagine an electron traveling down the external circuit to an electrode surface. So when the electron reaches the solution interface, it can do only what? Two things. It can remain at the electrode surface and increase the charge of the double layer, which constitute a non-paradic process or a non-paradic current. Or it can leave the electric sur electrode surface and transfer to a species in the solution becoming part of the paradic current. So I hope you see the difference between uh, what we call these two processes. Because I think this is where you divide the line, okay, when you have a battery or a non-battery. So where do you think, okay, the electrodes that we're going to talk about electroanalytical will come uh, to. So mostly this. The battery would fall almost on this one. Okay. And I would say you can also simplify or differentiate uh, differentiate the two into what? One is this and the other one is not this. What do you, what do you think is that? So in what way you can differentiate, we could, we could say a, a paradic current. So as we could say, uh, paradic current, it happens at the electrode, okay? So that means it's happening in the metal. It in, involves what? Electrons. And usually what do you have there? What, what do you say about the general term of the redox? Redox reaction is a type of what? We could say the paradic process will only chemical. happen if you have chemical this. Reaction. A chemical reaction. Okay. Now the non-paradic current on the other hand, what do you think? Do you see a chemical reaction there? It doesn't involve chemical reaction. It's associated uh, usually with the processes like uh, charging and discharging of your electrical charges. Okay. So when you have non-paradic uh, currents, they are generated when you store or release electrical energy in a way that it doesn't involve chemical changes. It's like you're storing energy in a capacitor or a device that can quickly store and release electrical charge without chemical reaction. So maybe you could say, oh, that's still a battery. Yes. What type of battery? Pag charge ka ng cell phone mo, di ba? So both of them are still what we call the uh, happen in the battery. But if you're going to look at this, yung mga old batteries where there's a chemical reaction, that's usually paradic based. Now, they found out that, hey, we can also do this thing here. 
So the same thing if you have the sensors, but the sensor is more, especially the current base, than paradig. Okay, so I think that's the, the simplest way to differentiate them. Everybody get that? Hindi na lang sasabihin na yung isa ay nag obey ng uh, Faraday law, tapos yung isa ay hindi. I think that's that's the message that was given when you are undergrad. Okay? Or the other message that you have learned is what? One involves electron and the other one doesn't involve the electron. So I, I told you the difference that you can have there, ima, uh, imagine you have an electron traveling okay, down the external circuit going to the electron surface. So you can have a paradic or non-paradic process. Okay. Either your electron can remain at the electrode surface and increase the charge. So that means there's no chemical reaction. Okay. Or it can leave the electrode surface and transfer to the species in the solution, which become part of the paraday current. So are, are we clear on that? Because I try to, uh, I think, uh, discuss all the things that maybe you have not understand during the undergrad. So involved in this, take a long, huh? Okay, I can approach the door. <coughs> so, since, uh, it involves some sort of mass transfer in this uh, what we call the process. So usually if we're talking about this paradigm current. It usually requires a continuous mass transfer of reactive species from the bulk solution to the electrode surface. So maybe uh, we can go back to the three uh, mechanisms that brings about this mass transfer, okay? So you have convection, migration, and diffusion. So again, uh, this was taken during your undergrad, but some of you may not have a deep understanding on what these three we could say uh, transfer processes are. So let's try to go each one of them. So when we're talking about convection, what do we have here? Okay, so in convection, it involves this mechanical motion of solution as a result of steering or flow of the solution past the surface of the electrode. So what does this mean? Anong ibig sabihin nito? If you have what we call the convection. Okay. So it has outside help. Mechanical motion. As it shown here. So maybe uh, we can look at convection as a movement of substances in a fluid caused by what? Steering or heating. So imagine you have what? I know usually yung mainit na bagay na ini-steer nyo. Soup. Okay, so if you steer the soup, what happened? It's going to make whatever you have there in the soup uh, move around. 
Okay, so that we could say is uh, conduction. Okay, it's a bit like you have uh, a group of materials and when you stir it, it's going to move together in the same direction. Now, on the other hand, migration is something on the so-called charges. It is the movement of ions through the solution brought about by electrostatic. Okay? So when you say electrostatic attraction between the ions and the charged electrode, I think I have a, a, a photo of this one. Okay? So you see here what? The convection. So the movement here would be assisted with mechanical action. Okay, and if you have convection, we could say uh, there's a transport of, uh, uh, to the electrode by the gross physical movement. And the major driving force here is, we could say, external mechanical energy. Now, migration, on the other hand, is the movement of what? The charge particle. Now, what caused them to move? So maybe, okay, the electrical field that they have. So if you have a negative uh, charge here, the positive charge will be attracted to that. The, the negative charge will be repelled to that. So the charge is carried through the solution by ions according to the transfer, uh, transference number. Okay? So that is, we could say, migration. Now, on the other hand, when you have diffusion, this is just the motion of species brought about by a concentration gradient. So we could say this is a spontaneous movement under the influence of concentration. What do you think is the classic example of diffusion that you can relate in your gen chem? Anyone? Anong example? Ang pwede nyo gamitin sa diffusion. So from a, a more concentrated to one. Osmosis? Yeah. Uh, but isn't it osmosis the other way around? You concentrate something by removing the solvent. The classic example that I have here, if you have a perfume, right? So if you have the container of the perfume, di ba mataas yung concentration ng pabango? And then when it starts to diffuse, so what happened? From a, a higher, a, what we call the high concentration, Okay, pag nag-spread out, yung concentration ba ng pabango, high pa rin? So, try to imagine it. And convince yourself that uh, the example makes sense. <laughs> so I'm just trying to, we could say, I told you, relate it to what is happening around us. <laughs> So I, I think the diffusion would be uh, uh, what we call a classic example then is if you have what we call the perfume. Okay. So your migration obvious naman kasi it only works if you have a charged particle. Okay. So maybe if you have a battery, so the ions inside the battery, they may move towards the positive or the negative electrode because of the electric field. Okay. But if we have diffusion, it is more on concentration gradient. Okay? So if you want to uh, put some sort of a summary on the difference between the three, 
we could say migration occurs in response to a potential gradient. Okay, so we could say this response to a potential gradient. Diffusion response to what gradient? Concentration. No, not that one. It's the diffusion. And what do you think is the convection? Convection is response to? So what is produced if you apply mechanical energy to it? Na pwede natin ilagay in front of gradient. Anyone? Isip, isip. <laughs> so if one is concentration gradient, one is potential gradient. So ano yung conduction? Pressure gradient. Does that make sense? Think of it. Okay. So if, we, if we're going to what we could differentiate them in terms of gradient. So one, concentration, the other potential, and the other one. Pressure gradient. Okay, so that's the different, and we might encounter this again the mass transport to electrode. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do with still the cell, so you might think this is still battery, but if we go to this uh, electrode that we have, like the silver, silver chloride. Saturate, saturated calomer electrode, you will see that the same principle that we apply to the battery is also applied to this what we call electrode. Okay? So let's look at the schematic representation of our what we call cell. So often we employ what? The shorthand notation, this one. This is your anode. And this is the cathode. Now, my question is, what is different here compared to the cell notation that we have discussed last week when we reviewed the gen chem electrochemistry? Ano yung pagkakaiba? Meron ba? Almost the same, right? So by condensation, the anode and information about the solution with which its contact is always listed on the left. The single vertical lines that you have here represent phase boundary across which potential differences may develop. And then the cathode is represented symbolically with another vertical line separating the electrolyte solution from the copper electrode, so like this one. But what's the main difference that we have? This. activity okay so if we're going to look at this the potential is dependent upon the activities of the cell what we call cell component and it's a common practice to provide activity or concentration data for the cell constituent in parentheses so usually before what do we do maybe we just put what like this one right telling us that the concentration is equals to one molar. Now, we could say uh, this is an electrode or a, a battery that is made up of zinc electrode in zinc uh, sulfate or zinc ion and a copper electrode in copper 2 plus. Now, how do we write the cell notation here. Paano natin isusulat dito yung cell notation? Or uh, schematic representation of the cell. So we could say, this is what? Is this a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell? Okay. 
So if we're going to look at this, this is a galvanic cell. So if we look at this one, so maybe we can put with this copper and then copper sulfate. And what do we do here? The activity that is equals to copper 2 plus, and the activity niya, this one. Okay. And then, and then we have here the silver nitrate. <laughs> A plus. Oh, A, A, G plus. And then you have 0 0.020 molar. And then you have silver ion. Now what if we have what? This. So how are you going to write the shorthand representation of this cell? Paano natin susulat to? So, based on this, we can have what? The anode may be the platinum. And then, since it's a different, uh, we could say, phase. So, we have the hydrogen. So, hydrogen here. Uh, does it say anything in terms of the concentration? It doesn't. So, we could just say that it is what? Saturated. And then what do we have there? What could be the other species that we have here? So you have an H plus, okay? And you have some Cl ions, so we could say there is an HCl. So what is the HCl that we have here? 0 0.1, 0 0.01 molar. Now you might say, why is it not activity? Because you have it from a solution, a hydro that has a molecular hydrogen concentration in a saturated solution. Okay. And what's the other side that we have? Do we have a double bar? Do we have a double line here? Voila. Kasi wala naman siyang salt bridge. So all of them in the same solution. So what could be the other side here? So you can put here your silver ion. And most likely uh, we could say How are we going to look at this one? Is this an AG plus? And then whatever the concentration. And then you can put there a line. And you have here a silver. Now the only one that is missing here is this. Kasi hindi naman sinupply. But if they are supplied, you should be able to put whatever the concentration that you have there. So this is just the same uh, cell that we have discussed last week. Yes, uh, John. Sir, si Carmel po ito. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> sir, question lang po regarding dun sa H2. Instead of saturated po, um, is it... Hmm proper or correct na yung pressure na lang, yung po yung practice sa amin. If ah, that is when we go on the next one, the thermodynamic, uh, what we call cell potential. Because right now, we, 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 we're going to go on that part when, when we have uh, that thing. So, darating tayo doon. Okay? And one thing that is missing, you might ask, so what could be this one? 
So you can look at the so-called KSP value of your what? The AGCL. And then from that, you should be able to get the silver ion. How do you get the uh, X based on this KSP? Usually it's X squared, right? If you're going to remember that. So this is the square root of whatever is the silver, if I'm not mistaken, 1 times 10 to the negative 10. So most likely the value that you have here is kung ano yung square root niya. Okay. So you can put the pressure here in a saturated like that one. Kasi given naman eh. Tama yung ano ni Carmel. But if it's not given, you can assume that it is uh, what we call a saturated solution. So the mole uh, molecular hydrogen is in a saturated solution. Okay. So this is how you write, uh, we could say, a battery like this one. So this is just uh, what we call one that have may liquid junctions with ito. Is there a liquid junction here? Because if you ask how many liquid junctions do you have in this cell? So what is your answer? Wala kang liquid junction. But if you're asked here, on the other one, ilan liquid junction meron tayo dito? Usually you have uh, what we call two. Okay, because you have two solutions here. And the junctions that you have is not between this and this, but it's between this solution and the salt bridge, and then this solution and the other, what we call salt bridge. I think we will meet uh, liquid junctions again in one of the slides that we have for tonight or for today. Okay? So this is how you write this, what we call schematic uh, representations of cells. So maybe this is the one that Bago sa inyo for some of you. Okay. Now, in most of the electroanalytical methods, we neither uh, we measure either the current in an electrochemical cell at fixed potential or the potential of the cell while current is fixed at some constant level or what we call zero. Okay. And in general, Okay. In an electrochemical experiment, we can only control the potential of the cell at the desired level and measure the current that results or vice versa. Because yun lang naman yung dalawang process sa uh, electroanalytical. Okay. You control the current uh, or you control the potential. And what we're going to do is we first consider the thermodynamics of the electrochemical cell and the relationship between the activities of the participants uh, that are in the sec, uh, cell reactions and the observed potential of the cell. So here we go on this, uh, what we call thermodynamics of cell potential. So sabi nila, okay, the potential of an electrochemical cell is related to activities of the reactant and products in a reaction. And they are indirectly to their uh, what we call molar concentrations. So we have to recall in your, I, I don't know, 32, the relationship of activity <laughs> with respect to the concentration. So recall that the activity of the species X, this is equals to just what? Activity of X equals to, what do we call this? Activity coefficient. You still remember that? And this one is the molar concentration. So the activity coefficient of the given ions or X times the molar concentration okay so usually kailan uh, nagiging uh, the same or equal yun activity at saka molar concentration 
when is this almost the same as this? When you have anyone? That's the solution. So when the activity, uh, what we called, uh, we could say uh, coefficient approaches unity. Okay, the molar concentration and the activity of the species are what we call identical. And when they are, when, when do they approach unity? Okay, when you have a dilute solution. So if you have a reaction like this, so this is just the reaction that we have, we could say, as an ion. Similar here. Okay, silver chloride reacting with hydrogen to produce silver uh, metal. Two chloride and two H plus. So that's the reaction from this thing. So if you're asked to get okay, the equilibrium constant, so how do you get it in terms of K? In terms of activity. So activity H plus activity Cl minus and then activity of silver divided by pH2, okay, silver chloride. So this is how uh, you write them, okay? And you have to include the, the, the what we call the subscripts that you have here. So you can put what, the two here, two, two, Two. So the, this is where the partial pressure of the hydrogen comes in. So the activity of a pure solid usually is what? Near unity, okay, when it is present in excess. So we could say the A activity here of this and this one is almost equals to one. Now, how are you going to write it in terms of the Nernst equation? So E cell equals to standard E cell minus RT NF. So how do you write it here? Anyone? Uh, si ano ba to? <laughs> Carmel? <laughs> Sir, bali po, um, sa numerator po ay activity ng H plus square times activity of chloride ion square and then sa denominator po yung pressure ng H2. H2, like the one you have here. Okay, and you have here uh, ACL minus squared. Okay, so usually you yung ano natin dito usually di ba L and Q at equilibrium with this L and K, but it's convenient to define activity quotient uh, Q such that that this is the Q that you have. And then. We can further, we could say, uh, put it in terms of the change in free energy, okay? So if you're going to look at in terms of the change in free energy, so ano yung ano, relationship nung gives free energy sa cell, okay? Maybe like this one, right? So once you get, uh, we could say, 
So this is if you have not, you don't have that. So once you have the cell here, you should be able to get the delta G. Okay. So ito yung parang uh, kung magbibigay siya ng work. So if it's a galvanic cell, okay, your delta G will be negative. So that means the reaction is spontaneous and produce energy that you can use for work. If it's positive, then that means you have to supply the energy. So yan yung parang ano yung equation that you can get if you relate the Nernst equation dito sa Gibbs free energy. So the delta G that you have there in a cell reaction, that's the maximum work. that you can obtain. Okay? So, usually, ang nangyari is you can, uh, what we call, uh, this thing will just derive okay, from this, if, if you remember. Okay? When you have this uh, NFE here, equals to NFE, I, I think we did it last week, minus RT, and then all we need is what? We divide everything with NF. Okay, ending up with this relationship. So that is uh, how the thermodynamics that you can find in the cell potential. Okay. And we go back, as I told you, uh, we, we met this term uh, already in the next one. We, we met this term already uh, before. The so-called liquid junction. So when two electrolyte solutions of different compositions are brought into contact with one another, usually there's a development of potential across the interface. So that is the so-called uh, junction potential. So it arises with the unequal distribution of cations and anions across the boundary. Okay. So I, I remember there's a place there in college or crossing but they don't call it junction remember like that one okay I think they call the people call them what Junson if I'm not mistaken okay so if you're going to look at this uh what we call liquid junction that uh happens so usually it's just an unequal distribution of the electrolyte so they, they will interact okay since they don't have the same composition so there's a potential that may come out of it so jan naga arise yung tinatawag natin uh, <coughs> liquid junction so consider this system so they are the same in what way they are made up of the same species okay so both of them will have what ions h plus and cl minus so both these ions the hydrogen ions and the chloride ion they tend to diffuse across the boundary and how will it happen diffusion so remember mass transfer so diffusion so anong nangyayari sa diffusion Anong gradient? Concentration gradient. Okay. So since there is what we call the uh, uh, what uh, uh, a concentration gradient, so what is the movement? So it diffuses across the boundary from the more concentrated going to the less, or uh, what we call the uh, uh, the more diluted or less concentrated. And we could say the driving force is what? Proportional to the concentration difference. So pag mas malaki yung difference, mas mabilis yung pag transfer from a more concentrated to less concentrated system. And we could say these diffusion rates that you have, okay, uh, is influenced, okay? by some other factor. So what do you think is the other factor that can influence here? 
aside from the concentration. So alin dyan yung magmumove ng faster? Kasi dalawa yung ayon mo eh. Okay? So alin sa tingin mo yung magmumove ng faster? Which has a rapid uh, diffusion between the two. So ang mabilis na gumalaw ay yung mass. Ano? Maliit. The smaller ion. So if you're going to go look at the uh, more rapid diffusion of the hydrogen ions, okay, because it is much smaller. The H plus will move faster, and I think this is uh, justified here. So if you're going to look at the movement, mas mobilis yung movement nun papunta dito. So the more the lute side of the boundary becomes positively charged owing to the more rapid diffusion of the hydrogen ion. And the concentrated side okay, becomes more negative charged because of the slow moving chloride ion. So what is developed there? Ito. At ito na yung tinatawag nating junction potential. We call it liquid because it was in the liquid phase. So you have this junction potential because there, uh, there is an unequal distribution okay, here of the ions across the boundary. Okay. So in a simple system that we have uh, here, we could say that the magnitude of the junction potential can be calculated from the movement or mobilities of the cut ions and anions involved or the ions involved in the system. However, they said it is seldom uh, that a cell of analytical importance has sufficiently simple composition to permit such computation. So yan yung uh, tinatawag nating uh, liquid junction okay now they said the magnitude of this junction potential can be greatly reduced by the introduction of a concentrated electrolyte so ano yun ano yun doon sa cell natin na wala dito sa example natin that is your salt bridge. Okay, because salt bridge is usually made up of what? Saturated salt. So if you introduce a concentrated electrolyte solution between the two solutions, okay, it can greatly reduce the junction potential. The effectiveness of the salt bridge, okay improves not only as the concentration of the salt increases, but also as the difference between the mobilities of the positive and negative ions okay, of the salt, especially if it has approached what we call uh, zero. So in this case, talaga ang ginagamit nila is a saturated salt, potassium chloride. Okay. And usually, if you have a saturated KCl, do you know uh, what's the concentration of a saturated uh, KCl? Have you asked yourself what's the concentration of a saturated KCl? Usually, we, we just add what? KCl in a solution until it doesn't uh, dissolve. And we said, oh, we have already what we call a saturated solution. So usually, you have around what? Uh, four molar to have a saturated solution. Okay, so if you have that uh, for molar or greater, it's, uh, we, we could say uh, the mobilities of the potassium and the KCl, uh, of the Cl minus, the K plus and the Cl minus, is just uh, deeper by 4%. So when chloride ion interferes with a particular experiment, a concentrated solution of KNO3, okay, can be substituted. And with 
such salt bridge, we could say that the net junction potential typically a few millivolts or less, which is negligible in most analytical experiments. So yan yung parang we could say function no salt bridge. Okay? That's why here you could say there's a junction potential that you have here. The one where you have your solution and the salt bridge here and the solution that you have there and the salt bridge here or the electrolyte that you have there. Okay? Question? With the liquid junction potential? <laughs> Before we go, this one. They might say, Jen can, Jen can tell you, but we try to at least uh, cover more depth. So we go back to that, uh, what we call system that we have, okay? So how do we determine this so-called uh, electrode potential? So usually we think that uh, the cell reaction of an electrochemical cell is made up of what? Two half reaction. And each of them, they have a characteristic electrode potential associated with it. So for instance, the device that we have, okay, this has this half cell reaction and this one has the other half cell reaction. What can you say about the reactions that we have here? Both of them are what? Is this oxidation or reduction reaction? So both of them are? Reduction. Reduction. Now you may ask, why is it, I, I uh, we wrote this as reduction because convention. Based on what? Reduction potential. Reduction potential table. Have you heard anything as oxidation potential table? Okay. So usually we write it uh, what we call by convention. They are both written as reduction. So the half cell uh, reaction, okay, or the electrode reaction for the cell that we have, the, the one that has the platinum. So if we're going to recall platinum, uh, H2, one atmosphere, okay. And then we, we, we can have their uh, H plus 0 0.01 molar. And then you have Cl minus okay, 0 0.01 molar. And then AgCl saturated. And then you have the silver. So that's what you have. And the overall reaction that you have is this one. So what can you say about this? Is spontaneous or non-spontaneous? So this is a spontaneous reaction. So if we're going to look at this, so this is just the cathode, and this is the one that is what we call the anode. And what's the basis that we have here? So maybe we should know the reduction potential value of this. So most likely this is higher compared to this one. So you put this here, silver chloride or the cathode minus the anode. And you use whatever the reduction potential that you have here. So another way of writing is it what? E cell equals to if you use the right and left. So what is here, right or left? So what is the corresponding cathode? So if you're going to look here at convention, this is the left and this is the right, right? So this is how we have the so-called uh, obtaining the reduction potential. Now, if we're going to look at the uh, nature of the reduction potential, what can we say? Can we measure them directly?
can we measure the potential of any given cell directly? What is the answer there? If I gave a true or false question in the quiz. Or the answer is false. Okay. No, you cannot measure okay, the potential of let's say a single electrode directly. Okay. So they said although we could say the potential of electrochemical cell is the difference between the potential of one of the electrodes and the uh, potential of the other, it is therefore too important to have a clear idea of what is meant by the potential of an electrode. So it says here, it's a measure of an electrode's electron energy. Okay? But, okay, as we all know, there's no method that can determine the absolute value of the potential of a single cell because all voltage measuring device determine only the difference in potential. So how do they solve this? So they have to use the so-called reference electrode. Okay. <laughs> now, the way that, that they said, uh, because we can only determine the so-called difference in potential, so maybe the, the way that you can do it, if you want to measure a potential difference, okay, you have to have one other potential, uh, we could say electrode that is connected to the electrode. So, one conductor from such device is connected to the electrode that is under study and to measure a political, uh, a political, a potential difference, okay? The second conductor must make contact with the electrolyte solution of the half cell under study. And the second contact inevitably cre creates a solid solution interface and act as a second half cell reaction, okay? in which a chemical reaction must also take place if there is a flow of electron. So diyan pumapasok yun, reference electrode. And the one that you have as the reference electrode is the standard hydrogen electrode. Okay? So standard hydrogen electrode, they use what? Hydrogen gas. Okay. Now you may ask why? Why of all things? Why hydrogen? Bakit kaya? So I think that's the common one, and maybe it has something to do that it measured the, the hydrogen, the pH. Okay. Now, hydrogen gas electrode, they are not only used as reference electrode, you also use them as an indicator electrode for pH determination. Okay. Now, it is not a metal, so you need some sort of an inert material where the reaction of hydrogen can be monitored. So they use the platinum surface, okay? And they said the potential of the platinum surface depends upon the activity of the hydrogen ion of the solution and upon the partial pressure of the hydrogen that used to saturate the solution. So if you're going to look at uh, this standard hydrogen electrode, maybe this is the system that you have. So you have an HCl there you have the platinum and then you introduce it with gas. So what happened? Okay. The hydrogen, the electrode uh, the, that you have there, depending on uh, to what electrode you combine it with, they can act either as an anode or a cathode. Okay. depending kung ano yung half cell na meron kayo. And it is coupled also by means of salt bridge. Okay? 
So what happened? Usually your hydrogen is oxidized to H plus when the electrode is the anode and the other way around when the electrode serves as a cathode. And to make it easier, they assign the value as zero. Okay, so, so that's that's the story that they have why they use this standard hydrogen electrode. You might say, well, why not the other materials that you have? So maybe I think practicality, hydrogen is what? In the periodic table, element number one, right? So sometimes when you try to do a reference, so you're going to compare everything with this reference. So you look, try to look at the what we call the simplest one, okay? Now, the, the good thing with this, uh, what we call standard hydrogen, it's a great uh, fundamental importance because <clears throat> in the long term, it's not really practical to use this. So they just use this to what? To get the potential of the other, uh, what we call materials. In the long term, hindi rin siya magandang tinatawag nating reference electrode. It's not a practical reference electrode. Okay? So what happened, okay, are the reference electrodes that are simple to prepare, more rugged, and easiest to use are developed to substitute with the hydrogen gas electrode. I have not used uh, a, a hydrogen gas electrode, but I use something that is similar, okay? The one that has an HCl and then you put a platinum and then it just released the H2. So other reference electrodes uh, were also used, but the main use we could say of SHE is just to get the reduction potential. And one of the common one is the silver silver chloride electrode. Okay, so this silver silver chloride electrode uh, they can prepare prepared by applying an oxidizing potential to a silver wire immersed in a dilute solution. So what really happened there? Okay, so merong kang silver, merong kang Cl minus, and what happened? You form a silver chloride and the silver chloride would be deposited on top of the silver metal. So it has a potential of about what? 0 0.2 volts positive with respect to the standard hydrogen electrode. So it's you half reaction. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh we could say one and this Silver, silver chloride electrode, that, that serves as a reference electrode when we go to voltammetry. Voltammetry, usually you have a three electron system. A potentiometry, you have a two electrode system. Okay. Now, how does it look like? So maybe similar to this. <laughs> So you have a silver wire that is coated with silver chloride and around it, there's what we call the KCL solution. I think in most of these, uh, what we call electrodes that we have, we usually have a salt. <laughs> I remember last Saturday, I think I have uh, 10 pH meters, all of them dried. And what I did, I collect everything and then put it in one big beaker and then put it with KCL. So sabi ko, if someone email to me about what I did, I'm going to take home all of those pH meters and send it there in UPLP. Because they just let it dry. It's one of the colleges I teach during the weekend. 
So kapag walang kumuha yun, next Saturday, iuuwi ko yun. <laughs> and then when I go there, I might bring it with you. <laughs> uh, I mean, bring it with me and then give it to you there. Okay? So it's a pH meter. The, the, the main thing that you have, if you have a pH meter or any electrode, don't let them dry. If ever they dry, all you need to do is put a saturated salt on it. Okay? KCL usually. Now, the other we could say reference electrode that we have here is the so-called uh, saturated columnar electrode. And this is consists of what? Mercury in contact with the solution that is saturated with mercury chloride as well as potassium chloride. So as you could see, potassium chloride is some like the common electrolyte for these uh, electrodes, reference electrodes. And it's a little bit, we could say, uh, higher in terms of the potential. Uh, silver is 0.2. A uh, silver, silver chloride is 0.2. This is around 0.24 volt positive. And the electrode reaction that you have here is this. So mercury chloride uh, being uh, reduced to give you chloride ion and mercury. So this is, we could say, the second most widely used reference electrode that we have, okay? Now, we will go back to this reference electrode when we go to potentiometry and voltammetry. What I'm going to do is we go back. Now, we have the saturated hydrogen electrode, okay? Or the standard hydrogen electrode. So when we combine it with the other metal, so this is the uh, saturate, uh, saturated columnar electrodes that we have. So as you could see, it's also KCL that you have there. Okay. Now, even though you said, oh, there's a mercury there, so the mercury is usually sealed. It, 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 it's not uh, going to be what we call leak unless it breaks. Okay. Now, what we do, so we have now uh, the standard hydrogen electrode. So we pair it with the different electrodes and we're able to get the, what we call potential. So if you're going to look at the electrode potential for M electrodes, so M is what? Any metal. So this is the setup that you have. And what will happen? Depending on the strength of the metal, this one can either be your what? Your anode or your cathode. So this is your anode when M is what? Stronger or has a high reducing potential. This is your cathode when M here has less reduction potential. That's how the role of this, what we call uh, standard hydrogen uh, electrode. And the value of zero makes it easier to flip. Oh, you're stronger, so you have a, uh, what we call higher value. Oh, you're weaker, so you have a lower value. Okay. And if you're going to look at this, what we call potential that they have, so any metal ion being reduced to produce a metal. And if you have this one, this value, how do you interpret this? So what do you see here coming from, uh, let's say going up? Copper is what? Copper two plus is the stronger what? Ano agent na tinatawag natin? Reducing agent or oxidizing agent? Because the, the thing that we have here is electron acceptor. So ano ibig sabihin ng electron acceptor? Okay. Huh? Okay. So it is a stronger 
If you're an electron acceptor, remember the Leora and the Jeroa. Okay. So if you are, we could say electron acceptor. So that's this one. So that means this is a stronger oxidizing agent. So you see, it's just playing around with words that you have here. And if you don't understand it, if you don't know really the basic, sometimes it's going to what we call confuse you. And the sign conventions that we have here, okay, according to the IUPAC convention, the term electrode potential is reserved exclusively for half reaction written as production. An oxidation potential should never be called an electrode potential. So whenever you say electrode potential, it always means what? Reduction. You can never call uh, an oxidation potential as electrode potential. And the sign of the electrode potential, they said, is determined by the actual sign of the electron of interest when it is coupled with the SHE in a galvanic cell. So if you have it here and here, so you're going to put the reduction potential that they have. So why did we say they have a negative sign here? Because of the potential that it gets when it was paired with SHE. So that means SHE act as what? Another cathode. If you have this value that you have here. So your SSE adds as your cathode. Now, on the other end, if you have copper electrode, you're given what? Positive, if I'm not mistaken, I think around 0. 0.34 or 337. Yeah, like the one here. So they're given, we could say, uh, a positive value because it has a saccatode while the SHE acts as an anode. Okay? Cathode, me question mark pa. <laughs> and I, I, I think uh, what, what happened, oh, wala dito yung table. Hindi ko na ano yung table. Ito yung basis that we have here. Okay. So this original ano hanggang dito lang yung uh, aking uh, what we call that because I think oh I think I'm going to end up with this one. So so we still have time so maybe I can uh, what we call discuss the effect of activity. So whenever uh, we look at the effect of the activity of the electrode potential. So sabi nga natin yung electrode potential natin, that is really the reduction potential. Or uh, we could say cell potentials for a cell consisting of electrode acting as a cathode and the standard hydrogen electrode acting as the anode. Okay? So let us consider this... Uh, Half reaction. So you have PP plus uh, QQ and so on, plus the number of electrons producing R and SS. So if you're going to look at this again, following Nernst equation, so you may end up with this thing. Okay. So at room temperature, we could say at 298, we have this, the cell potential equals to the standard cell potential and log of the product activity, uh, the product of all the activities over the product of all, uh, all the uh, uh, reactant activities. So the product of the product activities over the product of what we call uh, <clears throat> reactant activities. And this is the equation that we have uh, in Nernst equation, which can be applied to both half cell reaction. Now, the thing that we need to remember is the substitution of the concentration for activities. Okay. So they said 
The molar concentration rather than activities of reactive, reactive species are generally employed in making computations in the Nernst equation. However, this assumption is only valid in the Lute solution because both the concentration and activities are, we could say, identical. Now, with increasing electrolyte concentration, the potentials calculated on the basis of molecular concent uh, concentration can be expected to deviate or depart from those obtained by the experiment. So that means, okay, as much as possible, you use the activity. Okay? So, balik na naman tayo doon sa tinatawag nating activity coefficient times the concentration. Okay? By the way that you do thing. So, yun yung uh, applica uh, applica uh, applicability nitong nurse equation. So, uh, and if you're going to look at this uh, standard uh, electrode potential that we have here, examination of the nurse equation reveals that the constant cell uh, standard uh, cell potential is equal to the half cell uh, potential when the logarithmic term is equal to zero. And they said, okay, uh, this condition occurs whenever the activity quotient is equal to unity, one such being when the activities of all reactants and products are unity. So when you use the SHE okay, as the electrode potential for a half reaction when all reactants and products are present are what we call the uh, unit. And I think I have here uh, the importance of this uh, standard uh, hydrogen electrode. Okay. It's an important physical constant that gives a quantitative description for a half cell reaction. And there are four facts that you have to keep in mind with regards to this constant. First, this electrode potential is temperature dependent. So what do you think happens when the temperature increases? I don't know is a potential. Most likely, Okay, it will also increase because it favors the uh, forward reaction. So you have more products there, more, it becomes more spontaneous. So the electrode potential will increase. Okay, yeah, if, if it uh, uh, to have a significance, the temperature at which to determine what must be what specified. So to be safe, you always put at a given temperature, whatever the temperature. And then another thing that we need to remember, the standard electrode potential is a relative quantity in the sense that it is really the potential of the electro of an electrochemical cell in which the left electrode is carefully specified reference as SHE, whose potential is assigned a value of zero. So the one that you really measure there is the potential of the electrochemical cell that you partner with the SHE, okay? And then the sign of the standard potential is identical with that of the conductor in the right hand. So what is the right? Usually that is the cathode. And the left is the anode, which is your HSE. And last, the standard potential is a measure of the driving force for a half reaction. So as such, it is independent of the notion used to express the half cell reaction. What does it mean? It means that whatever the concentration of the species that you have there, the cell potential will just be what? The same. So if you have a calculation here, if you're going to determine the potential of this one. So what will happen? This is what? 0 0.779 minus 0 0.0592 divided by what? One electron. And then this is log of 1 over activity of silver ion. 
right? So if we have one here, so this one is equals to what? One. Now what if we have 100? How it how will it affect the equation? Will it be the same? So you have 0.779 and then you have minus what? 0 0.0592. I think I'm missing something here. This should also have what? 100 electron. So this is equals to 100. And then what do I have here? The log. So since I have 100 there, so that's 100 log. 1 over... So we can cancel out here. Should they end up to be what? The same. Because the E here is what? What do we call it in Gen Chem? An uh, intensive property. It doesn't depend on the amount of the material. So I think I'll end my thing here okay question so i might pause some quiz because we have already discussed a lot so uh, it's right for you to have a quiz at this time and some of you have already started uh, putting something uh, in the assignment because i think how many more weeks before october So question so far, kayo ba yung nanonood doon sa Pinos kong video? Because I was surprised, 38 views agad. Or maybe one minute and then saka uli, manonood. <laughs> because of the internet connection. So, just wait for the announcement in the group chat. So, if ever it will be Sunday during the weekend, I, I will I, I tell you about it. Okay, so most likely the materials that we have, and I post some articles there. So, if ever I for, force you to read it, uh, I'm going to make a quiz based on that material. So question, so far, 11.26, baka kasi umatend kayo nung uh, merong webinar kasi eh, I think yung B program, not webinar, uh, seminar in person. So tanong, So we're still on the introduction because after the introduction, we go with potentiometry. Okay. And then we go with what we call voltammetry. So I, I, I'm trying to get uh, some of the uh, stuff from BART. Okay. And then, siguro pag biosensors na we go with one. Kasi wala namang mention ng biosensors sa BART. It all goes to one. Yes. Uh, si Jan ba to or si Carmel? Si Carmel po, sir. <laughs> sir, question dun po sa last statement nyo kanina sa last slide, yung about sa E being an intensive property. Yeah. Is it E po talaga, sir, or E not po? Mm, uh, no, I think it's the what we call the self-potential, the, the, the reduction potential at one uh, molar, if you're going to what we call do it. But I think it what what I say, uh the, the standard, I think, uh, to make it with the standard self potential. Okay, the one that you okay. have. Thank you for <clears throat> so, no, voila. Uh, I don't have anything to hold you. Uh so next week we might just meet uh on Wednesday, 
So sa Friday, probably we meet, baka malate ako because I, but I, I'll ask you doon sa mga walang pasok. I have a, maybe I can share it to you. Hindi ko na i-record para.